Alright, so this is lecture six, number six. I just took a five minute break. My girlfriend. I'm not sure. <laughs> Look, I'm not that fast. Come on, I can last longer than five minutes. Go take it that way. Okay, so we introduced the concept of metric space and now we have to list out some definitions in metric space. So, we have so many definitions, I'll just go through each of them. A neighborhood. A neighborhood is a set around P, right? It's a set such that, because of all points such that the distance is less than R for some. A positive uh, real number. It's like NRP, the neighborhood, set of all Q, set of all Q, such that the distance between P and Q is less than R. So basically, you have P here, and then you have this is R. Is R and that all your P's, right? All your P's, all the all, all, all your Q's, right? All your Q's are in Q. And a point P is a limit point of a set E. A, every neighborhood of P contains it intersects um, other point in E. So, so say. So if oh the, the color, if, if if p is a, a limit point of e right then p is a limit point of e if we give a neighborhood around p it must intersect some point from e and we have another one that again intersects some point of e other than p if we give another one at this point. So no matter like how large how large your neighborhood, there's always a point and E intersects with the neighborhood other than P. <laughs> then P is a limit point of E. Right? And E is closed if every limit point of E is a point of it. So E contains all its limit points. And we know no, a point P is the interior of E. e P is the interior of E really means that. So say you have E here. This is E. And this is P and E. P is interior of E if there exists a neighborhood of P. Such that it's, sub it's contained in E. If there's a neighborhood of P. Right? If you have this E, you have P. P here. P here, then you get a neighborhood like this. It's in E. It's in E, right? The P is the interior of E. And the complement of E denoted by E C is equal to all the points not in E. Simple. And if set E is perfect if it's closed. And every point of E is a limit point of E. So it contains all its limit points. And also all its points are limit points of E. That's pretty perfect. And set is bounded if there's a real M such that. So E is if E is bounded. Then you have point E. Then you have a radius. If there exists that covers all the points in E, then the set is bounded. Just think it on your own. Like if there's a real M such that, and a Q such that, right? All the distance between P and Q are less than M. And e is dense. Yeah. Point of e, point of e, right? 
and let's continue. So we're gonna introduce some notation. For the puncture neighborhood or empty center neighborhood is equal to the neighborhood around P other than P. And we note the set of all limit points of E with this, and the closure is the union of E with its limit points. So now we consider this sequence. The limit point of this set is not in the set. So you have in 1, in 2, 102, 103, 104, right? Zero is the limit point of this set because no matter no matter what uh, your radius is, you can always find a point that is inside this uh, tolerance or something, this interval, zero, other than zero itself. So zero is the limit point of the set. Just look at the definition, you can see that. But zero is not in the set, right? Zero is not, zero is not equal to one over n for any n. Right, it's not in the set. The limit point is not in the set. And we also also note that by the Archimedean property we know that um, for any for any R and S there exists a rational right between them. Also there also exists a irrational between them. It can prove easily. So what we have shown is that R is a set of all limit points of rationals. What are the limit points of rationals? The limit points of rationals. So look. Limit point of rationals. If every neighborhood of a point contains a rational, So, R is the limit point of all rational. Right? So, if you have a real number, no matter what, you have a real number, no matter what you choose, there's also a real number, right? Also a real number, and you can find a rational. You can find also a rational, which is other than R. So which means that R, every real R is a limit point of rationals, right? Just a fact to let you know. And we should prove that every neighborhood is an open set. So let's see, let's see. Because there's a neighborhood around P for some reason. Pick a Q, you pick Q in the set. Then we have V, P, Q is less than R by the definition of neighborhood. Now, since, 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 no. So we let 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 h is equal to r minus their distance. It's greater than zero, right? And we let this h be a neighborhood, at the radius of a neighborhood. So we consider the neighborhood h around q, right? Then for any s and this neighborhood, we have this in between this point and P, we use the triangle inequality as Q, Q, P. Less than H plus D, Q, P. And then we do the substitution. We substitute this. 
you get this is equal to r. So which means that, which means that sp is less than r. Which means that S is in the neighborhood of P, right? Hmm. Simple. Then we have MHQ as a subset of NRP, right? So we have NRP is open. Oh, wait, I didn't define what is the open set. Did I? Into, oh, open set. The most important definition is open at every point is interior. So every point, every point at E, every point at E has an interior that is inside. Like something like this. The, the set is open. So right here we have for any s s in this set in this set there is no, no, no. <laughs> so we have we pick any point q here we have a radius such that mhq is in this yeah see And this set is open. Now, we should say that if P is a lemma point of E, then P intersects infinite many points of E. So, you think about it. Like, every neighborhood intersects a point other than E. Right? So, if we, if we assume for a contradiction, There's a contradiction so that we have exits a neighborhood. P intersects finitely many points. With E. Just call them like, you know, Q1, Q2. They're finally up there, we can list them out, right? But we put, we put, we put R equal to the minimum, minimum of all the distance between P and QI. This new radius. We know that r is of course greater than zero, right? It's, it's a distance, so it's like, and it's other than p. And qi is not equal to p, right? So their distance cannot be zero, so it must be positive, right? <laughs> then, <coughs> then we have. Then we have. Country neighborhood. This P does not intersect P. Why? Why would the radius then is not gonna work? Well, say if if it, if it intersects. So if there exists an X. If it's not meant to. So such suppose that there exists a point like this. Right? Do we know that X is in is in uh 
in in the original neighborhood of P. The original neighborhood. We call this origin original neighborhood, we call it N, right? So X is the origin neighborhood. And it's X B. Since since we know that this is a subset of the origin neighborhood. It must be this. And then this set This set is precisely the points Q1 to Qn, right? So you have x is equal to Q, say k, for some k, for some k, right? Then, but x does not equal to this. Because, because, this is good, right? Like, this is true. So we have x is in the set, and also not in the set. Like this cannot be happened, right? So this must be empty, right? But it violates the setting that all neighborhoods of P intersect E, a point other than itself. So we have P is not the point. So we have E is a limit point of E and also not a limit point of E. Again, a contradiction. So the whole thing is false. Right? So it cannot intersect finitely many points. It will give you like ridiculous results. Mm -hmm. So it intersects with infinite many points. Right? So an easy corollary is says that my like, set has no little points. Just think about it on your own. It's like straightforward, right? Because if a set E has little points, that intersects with infinite min many points in E. But E is finite. It is a contradiction. Okay? No one just... We need the Morgan laws for our proof next result. This was like really straightforward. So if x is in this, so x is it's not in x is not in right for any alpha. So we have x And every so we have we have shown we have shown this is true, right? This is true is left as an as an exercise for you, bro. I'm tired. And now we have the last oh not last we have one two more theorems to prove. And the theorem says that a set is open if and only if it's complementary. So. Suppose this complement is closed, right? We let a point goes into E. Then we have X is not a this set. So if it's not even in this set, it cannot be an element point of E C. Not a point of e c because it is closed. If it's if it's closed, then all this little point is in this set. If it's not even in the set, it, of course it cannot be a limit point, right?
also we have to exist the neighborhood n of x such that this is not a limit point then there exists a neighborhood such that it intersects it does not intersect the segment which means that and this is a subset of e right if that's the case then we have x is interior point of e so now if the x is on e it's the interior point of e which means that e is open now we go another way around this direction and e is open so we let x be a limit point of this then we know that all neighborhood of x intersects ec Right? All neighborhood of X is like you see, which is that all neighborhood of X is not a subset. It's not a subset of E. So we have X is not an E because X is an E. No, no, no. E is open. Right? If X is an E, then all the neighborhoods are contained in E, but it's not, so it cannot be an E. Right? So we have. You see? No. It's a limit point of EC. It's an EC. So we have EC is closed. Right. And we're done. One more. Corollary. The set is closed but the only if it's corollary is open. We use the fact that E C C We do it on your own. Now the last theory. The thing works for so arbitrary union of so you can have in infinite union, calibral unions, finite unions of open sets, the unions Let's take a look how to prove it. So the G is the union oops, union of all open sets. X is in G. X is in some G alpha, right? That means that X is interior of G alpha. Which means X interior of G. So G is open. And part B, it says arbitrary intersection of closed sets. Or closed. We use the De Morgan law. Arbitrary union. Each F alpha is open. So now we can see this is the Morgan law. F alpha is open. No, no, no. No, no, no. F alpha is closed. Right? F is closed. Then this is open. This is arbitrary union of open sets right it's open so which means that which means that c is open right which means that closed
Arbiter Union process is closed. Done. A, B, C. C is a bit more tricky. So we let H be finite intersection of closed sets. Then for any X and H. There like exist neighborhood of X such that right for like a regular H that X is in every single one of them. If X is in every single one of them and each of them are open, then there exists neighborhood of x such that n1 is in this, n2, and n, right? Well, with radii r. With radii ri. I took r because a minimum, minimum, Minimum of them. Then we have this new radius is in GI for all i. So we have it's in H. So interesting. Which is in all of them, right? Yep. And now D, D says find a union of closed sets of closed. We use it to Morgan's law again. It's, and the result follows the Morgan's law. And that's the end of this lecture. Shout out to 